Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us Keith Basil, VP of Edge Solutions at Rancher Labs. Keith, first of all, uh, welcome to the show. It's nice to have you here. Hey, thanks for being here. I'm happy to uh, have this time with you. If I'm not wrong, I think you are the, the first person I have talked from Rancher with Edge in their title. I mean, I have talked to people outside, they do have. So um, I have talked to Shang and other people at Rancher. Uh, Edge is really uh, one of the critical piece of the work that you are doing there. But I want to know from you, since it's in your title as well, talk a bit about uh, the Edge that Rancher Labs has when it comes to Edge. I have a really strong personal interest in things that are related to the edge. Uh, I've done some academic research around decentralized uh, cloud and what it takes to do that. And what really excited me about Rancher was the adoption of K3S, the lightweight uh, Kubernetes distribution. Um, that took a lot of, and I'm going to use Darren um, Shepard's uh, words here, who's the CTO of Rancher. He says K3S uh, removes a lot of the cognitive load of standing up Kubernetes, right? So um, I very much appreciated that. So I'm a product manager um, by profession. And if, if a guy like me can install uh, something like K3S and stand up a Kubernetes cluster on a pretty low footprint machine pretty fast, that's significant in this space. Um, so I see K3S as a building block for many of the edge solutions that are to come in the future. So it's it's very exciting to be in this role to help steer that. Um, I call it the eye of the storm, so to speak, and it's a very exciting time. If you look at Edge, different people define it in their own way. <laughs> the definition of Edge varies. How would you define Edge, especially when we are talking about K3S, so that we can actually build the context that what kind of use cases it makes sense for? Let me give you how I think about it. I'll give you some insight there. Um, let's go back to school. So. In geometry, when you study like uh, ge geometric geometrical shapes like the edge and rays and circles and things like that, the word edge almost denotes kind of a topology built into the definition, right? So the real question is the edge of what, right? And so most people look at the edge as uh, having the cloud or some centralized uh, IT infrastructure as the center of the universe, and then looking out from that to the edge to extend compute storage and all kinds of resources there. So that's more of a classical definition. And, and within that definition, you've got notions of a near edge, like closer to the cloud or closer to the infrastructure, and you've got what's called the far edge. So let's take a high level definition of those. Um, the near edge you'll see used um, in the telco space where uh, the telco players, uh, to their credit, are trying to put compute resources close to their infrastructure, to the telcos, the central offices, the 5G networks, and and such. And their intention there is to bring applications and services from partners to run on that mobile edge computing infrastructure. So it's close to that infrastructure in terms of latency. So the best way to think about that logically is that that's on the provider side of the cable modem or your access uh, device, right? So when we talk about far edge, a, a clean way to think about it is, okay, what's on the other side of the cable modem? What's that device? What does that look like? And so there's this concept of near and far edge. Um, the K3S uh, product and project has been adopted by more of the far edge use cases. And so we can start there if, if we want to go further with the edge definition. No, it, it makes perfect sense. Um, because uh, whatever Rancher is doing is based on where Rancher is seeing the adoption within the community, right? You are going where the users are going to help them better you know, run their workloads. Uh, so when we look at uh, Edge uh, or how the how K3S is serving it, where do you see is the growth coming uh, from or what is driving the adoption and growth of K3S and Edge? Let's take it in parts. So the first part is that um, Kubernetes and the container world, uh, you know, Kubernetes as orchestrator for containers is kind of the de facto standard, right, for managing uh, container-based application stacks, right? And so what's beautiful about Kubernetes is that we have one standardized API to manage not only the application, but also the infrastructure. So that, that's kind of a, a context setting premise, if you will. And Kubernetes by nature can be complex. Again, going back to that cognitive overload, we've reduced that with K3S 
number one. So uh, anybody can run, you know, one simple, you know, command line script and actually have a Kubernetes cluster up and running in about 45 seconds. That right there is probably the, the key thing to seeing the uh, proliferation of Kubernetes and K3S specifically um, at the edge. The second piece of that is that it runs on low fr footprint hardware. So the, the, the resources required to run K3S are very light. Uh, so the, the, it's one binary that encapsulate, encapsulates all the services. Um, you can run it on a one gig machine, two gig machine, uh, Intel Atom, uh, et cetera. It also runs on ARM. So we are looking at 20,000 downloads per week of K3S. And so what you have is uh, a lot of organizations and individuals, developers, et cetera, who are downloading this and trying it on, on their home hardware. So for, for example, I've got three machines here running K3S and I stood them up literally in about 10 minutes. <laughs> so, and again, I'm not the most technical. I am a product manager in a technical space and I can do that. But uh, again, it, the ease of use is really the key and the fact that it can run pretty much everywhere is the other key for the proliferation that we're seeing. And then you talk about all these amazing downloads. Can you talk about uh, uh, some of the use cases that you're seeing of K3S? It's diverse. Uh, it's all over the board. So um, on the commercial side, we're seeing uh, K3S deployed in wind turbines. Uh, we've got people with uh, support trucks rolling with you know small clusters of, of Kubernetes running on top of K3S. We have uh, in the DoD space, there are some very exciting use cases. Uh, imagine a small computer and a backpack on a soldier, right? Running K3S um, in vehicles. Uh, we even have use cases where there's gonna be K3S running on satellites in space. So that gives you some idea of the breadth of applications there. But by and large, um, the, most of the use cases we're seeing are uh, related to the title of your show related to uh, evolution of the fourth industrial revolution, right? So we're seeing uh, factory adoption, we're seeing restaurants uh, take on K3S uh, because, because again, the overhead to run it and manage it is pretty light compared to other distributions. Since we were talking about, you know, how the use cases of Edge, you know, or K3S are amazing, you know, the soldier on the backpack or satellites, Let's, and since, you know, the TFI is stand for the fourth industrial revolution, we are always talking about the emerging technologies. What kind of, uh, uh, kind, you know, it's hard to predict, but still, you know, what is next for Edge? You know, how do you expect, you know, kind of Kubernetes uh, to evolve for Edge or Edge itself will evolve? Because as you said, it's, it's, uh, to define Edge itself is, is kind of cr uh, challenging and complicated. Let's um, review what we have here. So we've got a lightweight version of Kubernetes running. We've got an easy uh, deployment and kind of tryout model, so which is great. And so what Rancher is seeing is that uh, people are doing serious proof of concepts with based on K3S. And then our phone rings, you know, so to speak, and these are customers that have reached a certain level of maturity in their cluster, and then we entertain uh, supporting that. And this is basically our business model, right? But what is coming in the future is that there are many of these things. So um, on average, we're seeing hundreds of Kubernetes clusters, these small micro clusters under management. So the next evolution for us is to figure out how we get command and control over a fleet of, of devices out there in the field. And there's all, all sorts of commercial challenges that come with that statement. And we're trying to solve for those today inside Rancher. Rancher is organizing an Edge conference uh, next month. Uh, talk a bit about the conference, uh, how people can participate, what is the format of the conference, and who is the right person uh, to attend this conference? We're producing an Edge conference, and it's really to capitalize on the popularity of K3S and everything that's moving uh, momentum-wise in the Edge space. So our mission is to bring together thought leaders, uh, developers, uh, CIOs, CTOs that have an interest in Edge. And so we're going to be showcasing uh, use cases, uh, technical talks on implementation, um, lots of cool things there. And I think the date on that is October 21st. It's a Wednesday, I believe. So um, we're, we're uh, very excited about that. We've got quite a number of people uh, signed up already. Uh, just to give you some background on the demographics, 43% uh, of those are from the US, uh, sorry, the North American um, continent. So. 
um, strong interest from APAC and EMEA as well. So it, it's international in nature, and we are very excited about this coming forward. Who should be attending it? Anybody that's uh, exploring an edge strategy, anybody that's uh, been tasked with uh, implementing edge, um, it, it, the gamut is wide. So um, we have good cross section. We've got strong commercial use cases, uh, similar to the ones that I mentioned at the top of the hour. And the others are, uh, we're showcasing some things in the DOD, which are phenomenal. So if anybody wants to see just um, how far we're actually pushing the edge, no pun intended, um, this is the conference to attend. It's a one day event. It's virtual. It's free to everybody. So uh, come one, come all. Uh, Keith, thank you so much for uh, talking to me uh, today about uh, the edge case at Rancher. You're really pushing the edge uh, there uh, as you had that pun. Uh, once again, thank you. And I actually look forward to talk to you because edge uh, is also a, a topic which is close to my heart here. So uh, I am really uh, interested in talking to you more about it. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for the time. Very, uh, very much appreciate having this opportunity.